Peoples of the universe, please attend carefully. The message that follows is vital to the future of you all. I am the master, and you will obey me. And sadly, my loyal subjects, it is that time again. It is now the end of the month of, the, of March, the Marchter month, as I call it now. We're no longer going to be talking about me, but I still have one more episode to showcase nothing but just me and me and me. So without further ado, let me introduce my other me guests, the Master Alpha. How are you doing, sir? A new Robbie at last. I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing this fine. Uh, apparently, oh, yep, none. So uh, with that, the other person just properly changed their name to something about the master. So uh, it literally the master just oh. clued in. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I thought okay. you were going to go the other way. I I was the master. It, but that was yeah. last week, so I just flipped it. I thought, no, I just figured if he's the master, and then there's the master alpha, chronologically, there'd be another one. That's all. Or I could just make it master soda, like master Yoda. I was thinking the master beta. Uh, that's off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to see that there's some character development. Last week, it was, I obeys no one but his dog. And now okay. you obey nobody. Yeah, I don't want to obey. You don't want to obey. Pretty yeah. nice. So I'm the wimpy master. What? I'm the wimpy master. Oh boy. The wimpy. Oh, Believe it or not, there is actually somebody on the internet who calls himself calls himself uh, the wimpy webmaster. But that's a discussion for uh, the green room after the show. So in the meantime. We have the birthday section of the week, and uh, this week we are counting down from the 21st of March all the way to the 27th, which is incredibly easy when looking up dates for people. So on the 21st, we have Mr. Ian Stewart Black. He was a, primarily a writer. Uh, he wrote The Savages, The War Machines, and The Macro Terror. Really only like The War Machines out of those three, but I have grown to like the macro terror even more and obviously this this sort of makes him the creator of the macra who have reappeared in the modern series in the episode gridlock now uh, also on the 21st and snark i always say i am not doing this on purpose okay this keeps happening but we have peter pratt who played the decayed master in the deadly assassin episode mm -hmm. the only the first to ever uh, take on the role of the master after Roger Elgato's tragic passing. Now, on the 21st, I think the Soda Master is going to really enjoy this. Lord Rassilon himself, Timothy Dalton, also I, no, uh, known as James Bond. An underrated James Bond, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, he's great. I loved him in those two movies. Mm -hmm. Those are actually the only two... Uh, pre Brosnan, Dr. Bo uh, Dr. Bond's James Bond films, I own. <laughs> How dare you? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so um, from this, we now take a significant nosedive into Bruno Langley, who played, <laughs> who played the character of Adam Mitchell in, uh, the, in the episodes Dalek and the Long Game, as well as the uh, Ninth Doctor Chronicles on Big Finish. Of course, the character himself is much bigger. Than the portrayal on the television side, but you know it is what it is. And also um, on the twenty first, this might spark a few controversies for people watching. Uh, Chris Chibnall, the <laughs> showrunner of the Joe Whittaker, Jody Whittaker era, and obviously a writer of several of the Russell T Davies slash uh, Stephen Moffat eras of Doctor Who, universally so, uh, beloved. Of course, yeah. I, wouldn't it be nice? Right? Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. That's right. uh, on the on the twenty second, speaking of universally beloved, the late great Miss Mary Tam, who played the first Romana, the arguably the most fashionable Romana of them all. I mean, 
even though uh, more, more people recognize the Lala Ward version, I mean, without Mary Tam setting the standard for that role, we probably would not have had there you go. iconic you. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Snark. Thank you, Snarkster, Snarkmaster. On the 23rd, Mr. Anthony Jacobs. Can you guess from this picture who was he who he played in Doctor Who? Not Sarah Jane. Well, probably not. Um uh... I'll the say a sea that, devil. The sea I'll, devil. I'll, I'll sea say devil. The, I don't know. I'll say the first doctor, the guy who took over from Hartnell. What? I mean, the the, the picture that's doesn't bad. give you any hints to any known historical figure. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, that's freaking White Herb. Close. It's Doc Holiday. Okay. Yeah, from the episode of The Gunfighter. I'll be your Huckleberry. Okay, so speaking of iconic historical figures... Also on the 23rd, we have Joanna Page. Can you guess from this picture who she who she played? I have a feeling you never, you're never going to get this. Not a chance in hell. Robin Hood. I was going to say, I don't think I'd forget that, that smile. <laughs> okay, well, take a look behind you. She was Queen Elizabeth in the Day of the Doctor. Really? Yes. Wow, okay. And she she lo- she neither looks nor sounds like the role she played. I was going to say that unrecognizable. Yeah, completely unrecognizable. And uh, on the twenty fourth, Miss Linda Barron. Speaking of the gunfighters, her first Doctor Who credit was singing the singing the song "The Ballad of the, of the Last Chance Saloon" in the Gunfighters. She also played Captain uh, Rack or Rack. It's been a while since I've seen the episode. I forgot how to pronounce her name, but she played Captain Rack in Enlightenment, one of my favorite Fifth Doctor episodes, as well as the character Val Kane in the Matt Smith episode, Closing Time. So That's why she looks familiar. She pretty much has her stamp on three yeah. completely different Doctors from three completely different decades. She's the one that just took them for the gay couple. Yep. yep. Okay. I love that. I loved her in that episode. I thought she looked familiar. She uh, unfortunately passed away last year. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we mentioned last year, we year when we mentioned her, we mentioned her under less happy circumstances. Uh, now, also on the twenty fourth, we've got uh, this guy, Rodney Bennett. He was a director of the Ark in Space, the Suntaran Experiment, Ooh. and the Mask of Mandragora. Next up on the twenty fifth, this is. Arguably one of the biggest names on the list, is at least in the realm of Doctor Who, it's Patrick Troughton, Patrick. the second Doctor, the first actor to take on the role of the Doctor after uh, um, William Hartnell uh, couldn't play the role anymore. And also on the 25th, Elton John, who appeared in a for like a hot second in the episode Love and Monsters. And honestly, yeah. this... This me showing his image here is actually a lot longer than he ever appeared in Doctor Who. But and, God damn, do I love Elton John! Yeah, we, Looks we like all him and Trouton had the same hairdresser. Yeah, yeah. The, or they, in, they went to the same in, in, in stylist. John's case to paymaker. How dare you, sir? Do well, you remember him from the eighties? He was bald. <laughs> I remember him from the seventies? No, okay, okay, fair. Now we're not going to get into that discussion because on the twenty eighth we have Mister. Barry Letts, who was the producer and showrunner of pretty much all of the uh, John Pertwee era. He was an executive producer. He was a writer on several of the John Pertwee era episodes. He was a uh, director on a lot of episodes, especially during the Patrick Troughton era. The guy pretty much reshaped Doctor Who in more ways than just one. And finally... Love that third Doctor. Love the third Doctor. And finally, on the 27th, it's Julian Glover. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he played uh, King Richard the Lionheart in the episode of The Crusade alongside the first Doctor, as well as uh, the uh, the Count, uh, Count Scarlioni, as well as several other different roles in the, the iconic Tom Baker episode, The City of Death. So I forget what the, he's more famous for. 
Of course, yeah, Walter of course. Walter Donovan from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the spider from Harry Potter. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> Balrog? Or, are you Balrog, really? Balrog. So, the wonderful list of people we had today. Thank you all. We quite literally could not do this without you. Now. I think he's... <laughs> he noticed yet. <laughs> he has not, or he has. Is this is this becoming a war? This is just like the master. Oh my gosh! Okay, so now that we've uh, take, taken care of the riff ref, sh- this we are a- we are essentially doing uh, masterful right now live on air, more or less. I like yeah. It. You know, I'm you know what, you, you know what, you you know what. You may have wondered why I called you here today. It's because one of you in this room. Is a murderer. And it's, and it's me. Dark. <laughs> yeah, so now we've gotten that bit of shenanigans out of the way. <laughs> should we get done talking about Memorable. all of me, or should I say all of us? Right. The masters. All of we. Yeah. All of the masterness. So today we're just gonna talk all about all of us. And all of our favorite incarnations, we do have a what is what is known in human terms as a tier list to rank all of us the the greatest character in the history of Doctor Who. Naturally, the Master. Hmm. So, so we're do doing you, all of them. More or less, there are a couple that I decided to leave off okay. for reasons that we'll, we will ex- I will explain once we get to them, but. This is pretty much the most conclusive uh, list of masters that we're. I would going also to say, as far as uh, the greatest show in the galaxy tier list, this one is quite minimal. This is the smallest yeah. one I have yeah, ever seen by, by, a, sm- by a mile. This is by far the smallest one we've ever done. But you know what? It's going to be the best one. Well, it, one you know what? With the, with the ma- well, those other ones are garbage the, compared to this one. Yeah. When it comes to the master. It's quality over quantity. Oh, I see. Right? Nice. There you go. So do you want to do it like this or like this? Um, uh, Go back to the other one for a second. I want to try something while we're, do, while we're on air. Apparently, there's... Probably a- on air is not the best place to try and do these things, but... What about this? Yes, Ooh. that's the best one. No. Never mind. Okay. With, uh, there's a new layout edit button. I was gonna try to see if we could, I could get us like that, but below. Oh my god! You mean like this? Yeah, but I mean, where the whole the whole tier maker thing was on top, but this will work fine. I like this. This, this is, is better. Now tears well, on top. Well, you clearly liked this a lot better. Oh yeah, this one's pretty. We're good. not doing this. That so, one would be Roger Delgado level for sure. Pretty yeah. much. So as you, as you've already alluded to. Our tiers right here, as you can see, we have four. Pro- again, the pro- one of the smallest lists we've ever had. But yeah, we have the Roger Delgado tier as the S tier, which is reserved exclusively for Roger Delgado. And no one else, no one else even compares. No one comes close to the level of Roger Delgado. Let's just put that out of the way first. Okay? I would have so been mad. I would have been mad. Yeah, this is exclusively the Roger Delgado tier and no one else. As for the A and B tiers, though... I'm actually pretty proud of myself for doing this. So the A tier is I am the master, and the B tier is and you will obey me. Yes, perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. And the D slash F tier is just called Bone Dead Stupid, which is something that the 10th Doctor said about the Saxon Master in the End of Time Part 2. So uh, without further ado, should we just jump right into it? Yeah. Do this. Yeah, yeah okay, Roger so, Delgado wins. That's it. Yeah, so obviously it goes without saying, but Roger Delgado is and always will be the best. He, I mean, if you want to put it in like RPG game terms, he has he's maxed out his stats in every single stat. Like yep. he's suave, he's cunning, cold, calculative, charming. He's yeah, he's got his charm about him. He's a master of gadgetry he's a genius he, he's an escapologist he always thinks ahead of everybody else he knows when to 
swallow his pride and help the doctor and eunuch whenever it's necessary for him, for his survival. He mm -hmm. always does his best to survive. He even has this weird ability that only the master has displayed up until this point of changing his voice to sound exactly like other people. Mm -hmm. Like he always, he, I mean, he will always lure you into a full sense of security before sucker punching you and making his escape. Like. He's the best. He is the number one master, not because he's the first, but because he's legitimately the best. And yep. all the other masters have had to follow him up. None of them even came close to his level, but a lot of them were really good in other areas. Yep. A lot of them have their stats mixed out in one or two stats. He's got full stats across the board. Like I, uh, these for Pokemon. I didn't realize I, w I had it for comparison. I didn't realize how apt it was until I clued in just what era of, Do of Dr. Who we're in, but he is to the master what Sean Connery is to James Bond. Yeah. Sure. Pretty much. And the, the John Pertwee era was pretty much defined by James Bond. Literally yeah. having scenes from James Bond in some of the episodes of the John Pertwee era. And, you know, John Pertwee himself was uh, a good friends with Ian Fleming back in the day. Yep. And then there's... Like, some people would argue that he's the uh, the Blofeld to the uh, the Doctor. He's the Moriarty to the Doctor Sherlock Holmes. He is... That's, the that's more apt. I think that's, that's more apt. Yep. <clears throat> Roger uh, Dotto is the ultimate adversary, and we would have gotten, obviously, a lot more of him if not for his unfortunate passing yeah, uh, in, in, in a tragic... Uh, car accident yeah. during shooting. So, uh... The entire eighth season, the entire eighth season, he was in every serial. Every yeah, single he, one. The, that whole season was dedicated for him. Yeah. And it, it really helped to establish the legacy of the Roger Delgado. Yep. So, I mean, obviously I'm not hearing a lot of arguments as you no, as, no. as there should be. Christ, so, no. no, I just noticed something on the tier list. Is that Jonathan... Price, yes, mm -hmm. okay, uh, yes, why not? Right. I've, I've, okay, <laughs> why not? <laughs> by surprise, that's all. <laughs> then is there any reason why it should? I didn't you know he was the master. Was that from that? Um, is that from one of those? Um, shit, um, red nose days or whatever, they yeah. Call it? <laughs> well, of course, what, what did you expect? Mm -hmm. That's right, no, not that. All right, next one. Okay, so should we talk about the lesser masters now? Please. Well, oh, we talked yeah. about them in the birthday section, but Peter Pratt from the Crispy. Deadly Assassin. In my opinion, <laughs> he's an underrated master, I think. Like, yeah. he, he, he's the definition of a one-off. And again, following up Roger Delgado is arguably harder than any task in any of any actor in Doctor Who. I mean, it's def it's harder to follow up Roger Delgado than it is for any of the actors who played the Doctor to follow up any of the Doctors that came before him. But this guy, I think he he stepped up to the role and he did not disappoint. Like, reg regardless of how difficult the task was, he made this character his own. Even though he only appears in like one episode, and that's it. That episode is as memorable as it is, mainly thanks to this guy. There are obviously other elements that, that take place here, but he made the episode. If he is not the main threat, the episode just doesn't work as well. But, you know, this, this That's master... A good is not, That's yeah. a good series there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, this master is not without his flaws. Obviously, the, this whole thing is just a face mask. You don't actually get to see <laughs> his expressive side. And this mask is terrifying. I'll, I'll say that. The mask is horrifying, but there isn't much pure acting in it. It's mainly just the voice and the uh, the movements. Movement, so, yeah. and, and, and obviously there's the fact that we don't really get to see this master for that long. But No, I think I'm more familiar with the second version of that one. I was going to uh, say, between the two versions, I know which one I prefer. Okay. But no, so, 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 you watched The Deadly Assassin, didn't you? We, we talked about it. We did, yeah. We, which which actor was it, though, as the as the master? Peter Pratt, the... Peter Pratt. Okay, okay. So then, yes, this is the one I'm familiar with. Okay, birthday yeah. boy, um, the, the one who, who brainwashed Goth. Yeah, I really, I, I really liked him in that episode. I re in that serial, I really did. Um, yep. So while I wouldn't have a Vanessa, I would probably, I would probably have him fairly high myself. Thinking, I am the master. I put him in, I am the master for sure. Yeah, it was oh, good. 
okay. I mean, I was gonna make a case to the fact that he only appears in that one episode, but you know. But like you said, it's memorable. There's a, yeah, there's it, a lot. It, it there's memorable. a lot that only appear in one episode. Yeah. Okay. And now cool. that I just really like that story, and it takes place in. It's Gallifrey. a good story. It's good. Oh, yeah. it's good. It's good. What do you want from? And, what do you want from the guy? No, no, nothing. Nothing. Just you know, I, uh, the king, crispy little guy. You did a yeah. fine job. Chris, that's you, barbecue. So, uh, yeah. So, so he had his one episode, and another character, another actor who only had one episode on the show, was the other decayed master, played by yeah. Jeffrey Beavers. So, uh, come along, boy. Hand me your vestments. Yep, you could definitely see the makeup there. Yeah, because this they, they chose not to go with the mask like they did in here. Instead, they just make up his fo- his face, and I think it made all the difference because he's actually a lot more expressive. Yeah, in this, in this episode. Now again, he only appears in that one episode, and, I, and I actually, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think he actually has less screen time than the Peter Pratt version. I believe you're right. However, however. Jeffrey Beavers is still with us, the only one of the classic masters who's still alive, wow. and he's done dozens, if not hundreds, of big finish episodes oh, really? where he got to further develop this character. So that was and him he, in, in Masterful, then? Yeah, that was him in Masterful, yeah. and he got to fully showcase Jeremy. his range of acting and, like... My favorite part. Really, really developed yeah, that. Yeah, my favorite. It was one of my favorite as well of the side. Uh, uh, actually, I would say, yeah, I'd agree with you. It's my favorite of the side... Of the side. Stories where they splinter off. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy and Bruce. Yeah. Come along. My least favorite one? The one on the ship. Yeah. Yeah. The... Well, wait, so, but, so this yeah. one's your favorite? Not, not, uh... I, I, I got confused for a second. I, 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 I like we're talking, we're, we've reverted back to Masterful. We were talking about the masterful, masterful storylines or whatever. Yeah. So I think that was my oh, favorite story. Was was Jeremy and Bruce. With the, this, I with agree Kitty. With my favorite of the side stories with Kitty. My yeah. least favorite was on the ship. Oh, so that's what you said. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got confused. Come along, boy. Hand me also, your this vestments. He may have only done the one serial, but he made one of the best uh, gifts in uh, Doctor Who history, I'd say. Oh, you mean a new body at last. at last. Look at that acting. Fantastic. Yeah, new body at last. So much better than you have. Then you have. Oh, okay, you guys have got to explain that to me. So the master can take over someone's body. Well, well, sort of. I mean, have you have you seen the power of the doctor? Yeah, that's pretty much what he did to the doctor. That's yeah. Okay, that's fair. Or let, let me put you this way: Have you seen the the Paul McGann movie? Yeah, that's more or less what he tried to do there. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie, though. <laughs> I so, finally yeah. saw that movie yesterday. After all this time, I finally goddamn seen it. What do you think? Oh, oh it wasn't very good, but I, <laughs> there was good parts to it. Like, it, like yeah, it would have made it like it. It reminded me a lot of those '90s uh, television shows that all came out at that same. Kind well, of that time. was the point. It was supposed to be a, a Fox TV show, it was like a, a pilot. Yeah. It, was it, a, didn't, it, it didn't it differentiate itself from much, but it let and well, we'll talk about them when we get there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was I'm glad I saw it. I was I really like uh, Paul McGann as the doctor. Let's see. Mm. Yeah. So, in the meantime, where do we put a new body at last? I mean, yeah, you know, my only exposure exposure to him is through the masterful. Wow, I, I would say if we have to have the crispy boys together, yeah. I agree, but because cool. of his over overexposure through Big Finish, I'd say he's gotta be. Oh, yeah. I put no, no, I yeah. put him, I put him there too. It was like just for a new body at last. He deserves to be pretty high up. Yeah, and well, while you're at it, you might want to also check out uh, the the other Big Finish story, simply titled Master, not Masterful Master. It's a Seventh Doctor story, and it it's re- it's really good. With this guy. And also, uh, Snark, didn't you also say that you also listened to the short story that he did? Called, simply titled, yeah, I Am the yeah, Monster? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. The one where he's, like, he basically invented earworms and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and made the listener Good. his slave. Hmm. Yeah. 
So if you listen to it, you basically slave the master now. Listen, I didn't want to say anything. I thought it'd be rude to say something. I mean, I you didn't have to. I said it for you. That's what I was. That's what I was gonna say. And uh, and so there's there's that there's the ma- Well, I think we pretty much said enough about uh, a new body at last. You can play that anytime you'd like. It work yeah. every time. So, so should we move on to to that uh, new body that that, that yes. lasted? Lasted Astro. for a very long time, as a matter of fact. Yeah, an incredibly yeah. long time. We have the Tremis Master, also known as yes. a new body at last. At last. So oh, the longest, live, longest live action actor to play the Master mm-hmm. on and off. Played the Master on and off for like nine years. And was the main Master for the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh Doctors. Holy shit. So, yeah, he this guy yeah. went on for a very long time. He also reprised the role in a bit in a video game called Destiny of the Doctors. It is not good, but the best part about that video game is you get you constantly get these uh video clips of him just being the master at incredibly ridiculous situations. You've got to check it out if you have it. If not for <laughs> anything else, just look out the cinematics of the game. It's 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 incredibly goofy and and incredible, hmm. but other than that, I don't really have much else to say about this guy. Other than he's the master, like he is For a, a very gen- yeah he's yeah he didn't bring anything special other than the fact that he just kept the role afloat for as many years yeah. as he did. He did. He was. He didn't stand out like any of the other masters. I, I'll have what? to differentiate to you. I'll have to defer to you guys on this one. I would one hundred percent agree with you. Like I just finished watching every episode he ever did on the show. Uh, there, like, there's no charm. There's no. There's no wit. Uh, there's nothing. There's a. There's a goatee. Which is supposed to be menacing. That last episode, uh, he's turning into a cat, so he has that going for him. That, but that's like the most interesting thing he does in that entire run is turn in, almost turn into a cat. Yeah. So yeah, so, no, he he was a he was an actor who played that role. He as a master, uh, far down the list for me. He was yeah, especially compared to what happens in the new era of Doctor Who with some of the people they get. When he had that much time, he could have developed so much, and he had uh, Delgado right there that he could have studied from, and just decided to mail it in. Far down the list for me. I don't, I wouldn't say he mailed it in, but mail it. Bring, he didn't bring anything new to the role. Snail like, mail. We, I, I mentioned earlier with Delgado how he maxed out every single stat. This guy just has a- average stats right across the board. Yeah. Oh. Like he, it's like they, it's like a distilled version of. They just took Roger Delgado and just dis- distilled him in some uh, water purifier, and that, that's what you get. You get like a it's diet like a, Roger Delgado. It's <laughs> like a Vancouver Canuck. Hey, whoa! I, I I saw that coming, and I did not want to interrupt. You hush there, Jets fan. I am not Canadian. I have no stake in this. I have no claim in this fight. Oh my gosh! You're the referee. Yeah, no, you're so the Zamboni driver. I don't want a referee. As you're the Zamboni driver. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so where do we put this guy? Again, I got to defer to you because I, I, I've i never seen anything he's done. I wouldn't put him in bone dead stupid. I would not do that. But I wouldn't I put mean, him any higher than I do all baby. I, I think we got to put him here just for the sake of his longevity. Yeah. Like that's really the only thing that saves him is that he was the master for as many years as he did. Agree. Speaking of being being the master for a very, for a very long time, we now have the old master. Not to be confused with Darth Maul from Rebels. Oh boy! It's also commonly referred to as the preacher. Sorry, my bad. There's a different master called the old master. This is the preacher master from the comics run at a time where there wasn't really much TV show to be had, and they wanted to bring the master in. So they just went with this guy. So he's not. And they, and he was the master for his reign for just that period of time, the preacher master. So 
I have not read any of these comics. I don't know much about this guy, so I don't really have much else to go about besides just... Then why'd you include him, if you don't want me asking? What? Because he was appeared. Like, I get why. We can always just put whatever. Yeah, because Bone dead stupid because we don't know him. Sure. If we don't know him, he's damn bone dead stupid. All right. Fine. I mean, again, we can't, we can't, argue, we can't argue either way. Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, yeah, and we got to fill up some spaces down there, too. <laughs> true. True. I mean, there are several coming up that I think would fit there, but good. You know, right. he, that's a good spot as any. So sure. we move on from the preacher master to the old master, <clears throat> George Tipple. Look at this guy. Sure. He looks like he's from a, a like a death metal band in the eighties, like like a band, like a cover band for King Diamond or something like that. I was going to say King Diamond. <laughs> yeah, a King Diamond so, cover band. So while you're not talking about uh, death metal bands, can you guys yeah. remember where he's from? Nope. Nope. Because I have it on good authority that the pair of you have seen this guy at least oh. three times. Or oh. Three or four times. Okay. You still, you still can't remember where he's from? No. no. Does this refresh your memory? Uh, yes. Oh. Well, I've seen it now once. I've seen <laughs> it one time now. No, no okay. you've seen it on you've seen it on the intro oh, yeah. of the show. Oh well, that's true too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically, so he's the eyes at the beginning at the opening segment of the movie. They gave him a so, pretty good getup just to put his eyes out there. I mean, maybe they had plans of him him appearing <laughs> in the movie overall. And they ended up scrapping most of it, just keeping his eyes. At least I he got know. the goatee, right? He got the goatee, right? We got to give him props for that. Yeah. yeah. I love how he went full out for just the eyes. I like it too. Again, that's, maybe they had plans house. of hitting that's him in the house. movie and this didn't work out. I don't know. But... I like it. He's already, he's, a, he'll, he, you know, he does not deserve to be bone dead stupid, if you ask me. No, I, I agree. So, yeah. should we put him. At, at the bare bottom, at the bare minimum, sure. because I mean, yeah, there may be, yeah, he may be, uh, he won't, may not be last in that uh, tier, but uh, yeah. just because those eyes are cool, and he got that get up all done up for himself, which is pretty nice, and he got the goatee down, and for some reason he has the stuff around his eyes, which is weird, but that's fine. It's for the effect. Yes. Now, and speaking of that movie, mm -hmm. we have the Bruce Master. Yeah, um, Eric Roberts, master, a master who always dresses for the occasion. Oh yes, he does. Yeah, he so, freaking lapped that role up. Yeah, he ate it up, and he's still playing the role till this day yeah. on Big Finish, both in he Masterful. Was, he was very he was good in, in it. Yeah, he was in one of the uh, River Song box sets. He was in one of the Eight Doctor box sets, and he has his own series, which is where oh, really? this image is from. Yeah, so he he's still playing that role from like a world away. Like literally, they have to fly yeah. people to Los Angeles to record him. Just I, to I just that love movie. that Eric Roberts loves being the master. Me too. Now, I uh, like I just saw it yesterday, and I've been looking as you know, I've been looking forward to to watching the movie for quite some time. Um. I thought him as the master, there's parts of it that he's really good when he's just talking and stuff. I really like the master in the story. Just some things hit and some things don't for me in that. I don't get the green eyes and I don't get why his voice changes. There's a few things that I just don't understand what the choices they made with the master, but that's not to say he wasn't very good as the master. He did what he could. And a lot of kind of terminator -y references with the master in that yeah. one as well. Which I thought was bizarre. Well, and remember, D2, D2 was still very popular in the 90s. And the sure. movie would just come out, like, what, five years, six, five years later, maybe? Four, four years. Four years, yeah. Actually, well, while they, well, yeah. actually while they were filming, it would, more, more, it would have been closer to three years. Hmm. Well, yeah, I thought, yeah. And uh, has an yeah. appearance, yeah. the movie has an appearance by a very young Will Sasso. Yeah. It was his, one of his first credits, I think. The one thing I kept thinking of, it's like mm. that movie reminded me of Rumble in the Bronx. Like like just in the just in the overall tone of it, where it's like somebody saw this thing but didn't quite get it. Like the guys mm. that made Rumble in the Bronx shot it all in Vancouver. 
So there's all kinds of mountain scenes in the Bronx and stuff like that yeah. in New York. It's like, well, that just doesn't fit. There's like, there's, it's, there's just a, there's a few feelings in that, like the doctor uh, kissing girl a couple of times and stuff like that. That doesn't make any sense for me. The half there's a few doctor kisses yeah. a companion. Half yeah. human doctor. Yeah, half human. There's yeah, yeah. there's a, there's a few things that's like whatever. But Eric Roberts. You can, you can tell why you can guess why that movie wasn't a big, huge success. Yeah. And why they never went to a full series, right? I I would like yeah. overall. I think he did better than the Trump Master. I like charisma wise. He had that. Mm-hmm. He had he had a bit of suave. It was it's weird him just take. I like the I like that you see like the Terminator esque kind of uh, uh, shape shifting thing or whatever. I don't know why but once in a while it'd be a cobra. Um, but I liked how you could see it kind of slither around well, and get well, bodies and I mean, possess that's, people. That's, but... that's kind of leftover from this guy. Yeah. Like, like a lot of it kind of has to do with the comic book run that he became a snake in the in the thing. But 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 as as the master himself, well, where would you say you would rank him? Um, I would put him because I don't have a lot of. Like, I mean, only listen to my master for a while. I only know him for the movie. Um, so I'm good with either at the bottom of I Am the Master or at the top of You Will Be Me. Well, that would be it. It's, it's just to think, does he deserve to be on that I Am the Master tier? Well, or, I mean, just in Masterful, for what he did to this guy. Yeah. Well, that's a, yeah. And like, yeah, if we're bringing those kind of things into it, then yes, I would say. Yeah, and if he's done so much more, if he's done so much more through Big Finish, then okay. Yeah, he has I'll, I'll get, I'll get past the, I'll get past the green eyes and the voice, and I could say, yeah, he should be in the I am the master tier, but I wouldn't put him above the, uh, the Me charcoal neither. twins. Yeah, the charcoal twins. He, he he has said in an interview in Masterful that he hated the the green eyes because the contact lenses were murder on his eyes. Yeah, but sure. he wanted to he wanted to keep them on because he felt like they really had something special there with mm. the master. So, I mean, kudos to Eric Roberts for choosing choosing to go through that pain just to deliver what he believed to be the uh, the best performance that he could give. Right? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. And I think him. he also mentioned that he, when he first read the script, he turned it down, and then he was at, offered it again, and he took it the second time because he had some time to think about it. I don't know. It's been a while since I've listened to the masterful uh, behind the scenes, but uh, okay. So now we we go from that to the Jonathan Price master <laughs> from the Curse of Fatal Death. Have any of you guys seen the Curse of Fatal Death? Not recently? yet. No. I just want no, to. Really I tried happy. to get it. Dude, you haven't seen the Curse of Fatal Death. You be, we've been talking about it for years. I know, but you know how fucking slow I am at things sometimes. Oh well, you know that that is true. That you got a point. But Boy. man, is it amazing! First of all, first of all, you can pretty much see the entirety of the Stephen Moffat era of Doctor Who in just that twenty-minute special. Like mm. he just Stephen Moffat just took that twenty-minute special and ex- expanded it over. Seven seasons, or however many, however many years he was show on, or like it's pretty wild. This is the Mister Bean Doctor Who, right? Yeah, yeah the Mr. yeah the Rowan Atkinson Doctor. Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, like, and how the ma- the Master was portrayed is incredibly similar to the Master from uh, the Doctor Falls and um, what was the in the World Enough in Time, like oh. even right down to the outfit, but. Yeah, so am I the only one who watched that seriously? I think so, yeah. Well, shoot. How are we going to rank this thing? Hi. Um, He's got I mean, a good outfit and a goatee. It's Jonathan fucking Price. I am the master. Yeah. And he's got Dalek <laughs> boobs in that episode. What? Okay, good to know. Oh, yeah. Seriously, go ahead and watch it. There's a okay. moment where he falls down a sewers three times in ages, 300 years every time he falls. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, watch the stupid thing, and w- once you watch it, you, you will start to notice the similarities between that and the entirety of the Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi era. Yeah, like, nice. All the elements are there, seriously. But as far as the, the Jonathan Price, 
I mean, I wouldn't put him in, in in I am the master, but I would definitely put him above in the Anthony Angley master. Sure. Great. Okay. I remember that. <clears throat> okay. Now, speaking of uh, miscellaneous, ambiguous doctors, we have the Shalka Master from the Scream of the right. Shalka 40th anniversary special with Richard E. Grant as the doctor and Derek Jacoby as the master. Not the not the Derek, Derek Jacoby you're familiar with, Derek Jacoby playing an android version of the master because apparently this master died in the movie. So the map doctor yeah, reconstructed yeah. the master's his personality in an android voiced by Derek Jacoby, who just cannot leave the TARDIS for whatever reason, and is basically like a slave of the Doctor, operating the TARDIS when the Doctor can't. Like This was a, an, an attempted pilot, much like this, an attempted pilot that never actually went to full series because the series got renewed by Russell T. Davies. But, I mean, it's it looks like the Master, definitely. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's got the goatee, he's got the eyebrows. A eyebrow, little more like the Delgado the... Master, too. Yeah, he's trying to be the Delgado master. I mean, he's, this master is basically a slave to the doctor. He still hates him. He wants to kill him, but he can't because it's against his programming. And the whole can't leave the TARDIS is once again very reminiscent of Missy in the final Capaldi season. But mm-hmm. honestly, I watched Scream of the Shalka twice. I could not tell you with a gun to my head what happens in that episode because it is so forgettable. It like Well, then he can't he has to be bone dead stupid then. Yeah, but is he above the preacher or not? You tell me. You actually, you've seen him. Would you? Would you rather see something with the preacher, or would you rather watch the Shalka one again? I want to see the preacher because I haven't read any of those comics yet. So then put them behind. And I did. I did see this, and you know, this can't That's contain it. It goes in one ear and comes out the other. So I think we got to put it below the preacher. Okay. Yep. Speaking of masters, we don't. We have very limited exposure to. The Unbound Master, played by Mark Gatiss. It first, it first appeared in Sympathy for the Devil, the Unbound story with uh, David Warner as the Doctor and Nicholas Courtney as the Brigadier. And he also went on to be a much more prominent figure in the Bernice Summerfield series, which I have not listened to, but he also comes back in Masterful, where he... Yeah. Stop me if you've heard that before. He destroys Gallifrey again. So, mm-hmm. uh, where do we put this guy? On the list. Well, the crickets are speaking for themselves in this episode. I mean, I I, I love me some Mark Gaddis. Gaddis. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Um, but yeah, it's tough because I only know him as the master from Masterful. I would put him in the uh, "You Will Obey Me" tier. There's no way he's in the, I'm the master tier. True. I would but, put I would put him above uh, uh, King Diamond. You mean here? Yeah, that's where I put him. Okay, cool. Okay, so finally the the load has been lifted. I don't have to carry this whole show on my shoulders again. We'll see. Yeah, it's the Jer- yeah. Derek Jacoby Master, I am the, the master. War Master. I mean, he fought the Time War. He was he's got his own series, one of the most successful series on Big Finish. He's got mm-hmm. the goatee, and he he uses his old man persona to lure people into a false sense of security before destroying their planet in a freaking time war. And this guy, I mean, the thing about the, the War Master is he doesn't just fight the time war to help people. No, he's got his own agenda, which Not usually really. ends up doing more harm than good. But, I mean, he is the master, so he's never going to fold and do exactly what the time lords tell him to do, right? Right. So... And it's freaking uh, Derek Jacoby. Yeah. So what, what do we say about this guy? Uh, I, I, knowing him from Masterful and from Utopia, I really liked his performances both times. I would put him in I'm the Master person. Mm-hmm. Me too. Ooh. He deserves right. that spot. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, you would be able to tell more from, because uh, of course of Big Finish and knowing more from Big Finish. I think, uh, again, uh, Utopia, uh, he has the charm down, but he also has... He also gets away with that uh, thing where when they always introduce the new master, it's like uh, not telling everybody and whatever, calling himself the professor and stuff like that. And eventually getting his, uh, I think it's because he said it's been so long since uh, everyone's called me the professor and starting to finally get it. And when he finally starts turning and remembering he's the master, Mm. it's a pretty great performance. So 
would you put would you go above crispy boys me maybe you guys have about the same amount of screen time well screen and you have that time weird has... that weird green alien that was with um stuff like that i thought they I played over. Mm. i would go there i would go yeah i'd go over <laughs> crispy oh. boys so between the two crispies would you even go higher I, uh, I, no I no 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 i don't think so uh, the one said a new body at last and that's always like gonna that. trump okay that's a trump card that's a trump yeah, card yeah hold on where is it where is it it's not gonna new matter in a second anyways at last. so because that master has more big fit well let me let me rephrase that because i've been exposed to the jeffrey bieber's master on big finish more than the Jarek Jacoby master, I'm. I still will put Jeffrey Bieber's above Jarek Jacoby. Not as far as the actor goes, but as Character. far as the stories that I've been exposed to. Mm. But I mean, this master effectively kills Leela, so you know he kind of loses points. So he goes down to kind of bone dead, stupid. Whoa, 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 whoa! I wouldn't go that far. But, <laughs> and besides, Leela turned out okay. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, twice is in her case. But oh my god! What 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 happened? I still haven't finished Gallifrey. Oh, uh, sorry. I started listening to the other ones. <laughs> well, I know she's okay now, uh, or at well, least, n but not by the masters, man. Well, which is fine. Uh, sorry for spoiling it, but it's fine. It's, it's fine, Fifty. But speaking of the Derek Jacobi master, this leads us to yeah, my first the master, the Saxon master. My technically speaking, my first master, and most importantly, you may have wondered why I called you here today. It's because one of you in this room is a murderer, and it's me. <laughs> Fantastic! Yeah, he's such a great, great master. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Eats, eats, the, he, eats it. He's up. the only one to live. My God, the way the the amount. What he was able to do at the end of season three was just ugh. And what this master does with the limited screen time available to him, mm -hmm. like oh my goodness, mm -hmm. most of the other masters wouldn't that don't even reach half of what what he achieved in as many screen time as they had. Now, yeah. granted, he always loses at some point or another. He won for quite a while. But the, the was the winning. Fact that he keeps winning. Before losing it all over again, yeah, but he's and also he speaks, it speaks volumes to how great this master is. Hmm. Right? Turned the doctor into Dobby the house elf, pretty much. Yeah, or Yoda, yeah, sure. caged, caged no, Yoda. Whenever I see over the entire world, whenever I see that whole thing with the doctor, the for, for some reason, the first thing my mind goes to. Is the Little Mermaid when Ursula turns King Triton into that shriveled? I can planet. see that. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Yeah. Huh. Well, this one's an easy placement. Like it's easy. You don't get yeah. no one gets Delgado, but you put him at top of Iron the Master. Maybe only one other one could challenge. Maybe. Yeah, there's only one yeah, other maybe. one in my head. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But with like this mess fifty. Yeah, but with this master came another. But do we even want to talk about the child that was in the flashback? I know. I mean, there's a like outside being in the flashback. What else is there? I mean, he's wearing traditional Time Lord robes that were they first introduced in the War Games. Yeah, they but push him up to the thing. To that's look the only cool it. thing about it. Like literally, that's the only cool thing about yeah, it. Yeah, someone's going that stupid. He's got I mean, two like, different colored eyes, guys. I don't know if it's that. I think it's just because of the flames or the fire bomb. bomb. I know. Okay. One looks green, one looks blue. Like David Bowie. Oh, yeah. Well, that wasn't really David Bowie's thing, but, but okay, never mind. David Bowie had two different colored eyes. Mm -hmm. No, he had one one that there were the, the pupil was larger and the, and the one eye than the other one. No, oh, sure. he actually had two different colored eyes. Uh, no, he had a special condition where one uh, one pupil was larger than the other one. I looked it up last week. Maybe it was a cyclops. Do not argue with me on that on that one. So, okay. do we put him at the bottom or above any of these other masters? I just anywhere in that bone dead stupid pile. 
Yeah, that's fine. Right there. Fine. So just leave him there. It didn't even say a word. Just kind of looked into a, looked into the abyss. <clears throat> abyss of time. Schism. The untempered schism is what, what it's mm -hmm. called. But sure. So after this master, uh, there was kind of a period of drought where there was no master on the TV show, and the big Finnish mm -hmm. people decided to make their own master yeah. in the form of the reborn master. Played by Alex McQueen. This master is arguably the most sadistic version of the master that we've ever seen before. And it's it shows. Like, seriously, it's pretty crazy what, what, what this master does. Like, there's, there's this um, part in it where he becomes an uh, an optometrist. Well, optometrist? Optometrist. Sorry, I, I, I said it wrong. But he becomes an optometrist and just starts to remove people's eyes out. Oh, I think he's doing so, it wrong. That escalated quickly. Yeah, how do you get to be a doctor and do that? Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, I, I guess it's oath. Yeah, but but also in his in his uh, defense, well, not really his defense, but as to make a case for him being the 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 master, he is quite possibly the most sarcastic and witty master of all time. This guy would murder people. Left and right, but he has to make a joke before killing you. Like there's a there's like even an a scene 80s action movie. hero. Yeah, he, pretty much. He, he there's a scene where he just runs around shooting people and like la 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 la, like la, la like killing people, dropping Whoa. people like flies, and having fun while doing it. It's like it's sure. crazy, and and, the, and he always makes a joke. He always he never misses a chance to be funny. More, and because technically in the timeline he comes before the John Sim master, some people would argue that this is where he got his shtick, his comedic shtick. Hmm. And obviously, well, we, one, one can never forget the iconic Skip line, the You tried to kill me with biscuits. <laughs> yeah, you tried to kill me with biscuits. So, do you have anything else to say about uh, the reborn master? Well, he sounds like a barrel of fun. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's this one thing I, I got. I gotta play it too. It's from it's from a, a story called The Two Masters, where he okay, meets yeah. the the crisp the other crispy master, and you just gotta listen to it. It's great. Are you still one of that cult of the heretic mob, wanting to regenerate the entire universe? Such an insane scheme. Do you know what? Maybe, just maybe, you are. <laughs> What did you do that for? I was in the middle of a We of... were wasting time. There is no need for prattle. I wasn't prattling. I was building to something. He needed to die. He might have alerted the others. I was going to say, maybe you need to see a shrink. Mm, that's what I was going to say, because it would have been quite amusing, you know, with shrink being slang for psychiatrist, and because I was going to shrink him, it would have been a pun. <laughs> you understand? A pun. No? Are you finished? <sighs> With this audience, son. <laughs> <laughs> He's the, master the, quality. The, I am the master quality, just from that a lot. Yeah, there's a, there's also a continuation of that in, a, in another scene where he does he does that again. He builds up to something, and then the decade master just kills the guy. And he's like, I was going to say a pun. And he's like, oh, let me guess. Fancy seeing you here. Isn't it a small world? I... Like, no, that wasn't it. Then what? <gasps> <laughs> you just can't come up with a pun that's better <laughs> than what the other master just said. Ah, uh, so um, I'm not the biggest fan of this guy, but I I, I do love his comedic streak. And again, mm -hmm. I have not listened to the Dark Eyes series just yet, but from the little that I have listened to, he's a pretty okay master in my book. So. Where would you place him? I think he sounds fun. That's yeah. the kind of master I want to hear. You tried to kill me with biscuits. That's right. I mean, just based on that line alone. Murder cookies. I, I'd say put a, he should be at the top of the You Will Obey Me. Okay. But again, this but is me not listening to the Dark Eyes yet. So, so could be high. Me. Sure. Okay. So above the Jonathan Price... Master, but yeah, this is the tough one, the other tough one. 
But mm. gentlemen, gentlemen, where? I think I oh, think boy. we oh, I think we all know where this lady is going to show up, right? Yeah. yeah. Michelle oh, no, Gomez, Missy, and yes, I am using the image from the comic book version because you know what? That is an iconic image right there, and I love it. So that's the one I went with for this tier list. Now, yeah. Now you can hear her Scottish brogue just in that look. Too. Just in that one on cover art. But I, you know what? I think some of the Delgado fans would disagree, but she's easily the most attractive master, in my opinion. <laughs> but again, so again, so what about Crispy? Crispy one. Crispy number one. She's still more attractive than, than Jeffrey Peters, I think. Well. Mm. And and here and here's something else. Skimmy, 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 and crispy. That's you, Bobby. Mm -hmm, that's right. I will not have my millennia of suffering mocked. Oh, you will, <laughs> and you will like it. You made your point, Missy. Oh. That's right. I, I just love how she answers back, like you will, and you will like it. And what an entrance she makes too, when she finally shows up. Oh yeah, when when you first see her, you you're not quite sure who she is, uh -huh. where she came from, and then she's when a the, robot. That, yeah, and then yep. in that penultimate episode where she reveals that she's the master, the first mm -hmm. female master, mm -hmm. it's like even in the the Curse of Fatal Death with with, with Stephen Moffat, Stephen Moffat introduced a female doctor before he introduced a female master. I don't think anyone was expecting the master to be a woman at that moment. Like people were saying she's another she's an evil incarnation of River Song. People were saying she's the Rani. Oh, okay. People were saying she's Romana. Like no one in the right mind figured that she was gonna be the master. And there she was. And like she could have fit as the Rani. I mean, yeah, she could have. Yeah, yeah, from that from that episode, yeah, it pretty much falls in the the in Ronnie's the Ronnie's modus operandi. But when it turns out that but not she's a chemist, actually, not a chemist though. Yeah, she's when it turns out that she's actually turning uh, humans into Cybermen, it falls a little bit more yes. in line with the masters. And that looked cool too. Yeah, I mean, I, I I hate that season as much as I can spend that entire episode talking about. It. Oh brother! But, but her, her in that in that season is she's the main reason to watch that season. It's she's just so yeah, good. she's so good and she elevates. She does what the master does. She elevates every single scene she's in, and she even outshines the doctor in some scene. So, like, it's weird. You, I think a lot of it is the same kind of arguments you could have given for the Saxon master as well. When yeah, they, when, exactly. So now this is what I'm saying. This is going to be tough. Who would you? Who do you prefer as the master, Saxon mm -hmm. master or Missy? It's I mean, tough. Because of that because of that one episode where they were both there at the same time, that episode, and I've said this to Soda, and I'll continue to harp on that point till the day I die. That's that whole uh, putting the master in that episode. It was not written for the Saxon master, mm -hmm. like from the mannerisms and from the script, from what that master does, it fits more in line with the Angley master, right down to the outfit. Like seriously, it's. I can never unsee that whenever we watch that episode, but that episode really brought down the Saxon master down on my list and Missy really overtook him because she not only outshines the doctor in that episode, she outshines the, her predecessor in yeah. that one episode. So if you had asked me before I listened to masterful. I would have said Saxon was my favorite, but now she is. And, and I have no is, problem with that. I have this, zero problems with putting Missy yeah. as uh, the at the top of I am the master. Yeah. Uh, I think they're both worthy. Uh, I think they both have a lot of fun in the role. Uh, I think she, uh, she's had more to work with, I think, than, mm -hmm. uh, than she, the she has more master screen brother. time. Yeah, she's got a, uh, my, she's got a great build up, mm -hmm. and she's got yeah. like just. The right amount of sass and and she's Scottish and you, uh, you, uh, as you all know, if it's not Scottish, it's crap. Yeah, and she's also playing alongside a primarily Scottish doctor. That's yeah, true. Scottish doctor. Now, uh, around that time, or rather, 
a little bit after Misty's introduction, we also got another master. Now, Snark, did you uh, ch- get a chance to check out the audios I told you to uh, check out before? We- I did. I did. And we'll let you talk about it a bit, and then I'm gonna then I'll say what I wanted to say. Okay, so the James Dreyfus master was a master that w- whose career was cut short because of certain things that the actor did, and we're not gonna he- get to talk about that because. It's very controversial, and that's not something I want to bring up on this show. Oh, shit. Look it up anyways. Yeah, but he did play the master in at least three or four episodes, and uh, he is a master, so we, we're going to have to talk about him. But, yeah, so this master, he's, technically speaking, he's the first master, right. or at least fairly early in the master's timeline. Bef- so before the Rochdale Gato master, but... Clearly, after he left Gallifrey, and while the Doctor was already antagonistic, in an antagonistic relationship with him, and this okay. master, this Master really does take his time a lot. He's very mm. patient. He likes to set things up and wait for them to happen. We talked. We kept bringing up the uh, the stats for the, for the Delgado. This guy maxed out all of his put all of his experience points into maxing out his hip, hypnotism stats. Well, right. Yes. So far as being, yeah, even was going to so far as they being able to hypnotize the doctor of all people and and Susan. Yeah. So like this guy can hypnotize other time lords with ease. And and yeah, in, in this image that we see here, he pretty much set up the psychic circus, which is the center point of the greatest show in the galaxy, the episode which this show is named after. But again, he he was the ma- he was the master for the first and second doctors as well as the seventh and fourth doctors. But again, there's some controversy that happened off screen with him. I, We're not gonna, gonna talk I about have that. no idea about anything that happened with that. So, yeah, so uh, uh, I, my opinion so, is so strictly did, that from the performance. Yeah, 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 but because of, because of that, we didn't get to see as much of him. As some of these other big finished men, yeah, and I couldn't even find anything on what you're talking about. Fifty, that's good. I'll, I'll tell you off screen, yeah. I'll, off camera. Okay, so here for me now, uh, when you had me listen to Zagreus and stuff like that, when I first started listening to Big Finish, was this man also the voice of Rassilon? For the eighth doctor, uh, no, that, that was uh, Don Warrington, who was the president. They are, in, who was the president are, of of Great Britain in the Cybermen to Potter. They are incredibly similar in the fact that there is really no inflection. He talks like this all the time, and he really pronounces his T's. He's a very he must be a radio actor because his T's pop and all those kind of things. This is just one of those things that just you know just gets to me. I don't know what it is. Everyone has their things. But I don't like when people talk like that. Um, the fact that he, there's no emotion, that there's there's no rage, there's no anything. It's just very flat. He's across the board. He's very like this. A couple of things that are cool is that there's the first doctor versus a master, which I never, which you never would have gotten before, or, or I certainly hadn't heard before. So I thought that was cool. And having Susan and Barbara and all the, it was like I really like that story. I just I just don't know about him as the master. So I don't know. I, yeah, I would. I wouldn't have him on my list. I wouldn't have him high. I would have him maybe. I would put him in the and you will obey me. I would to put beware to put him or whatever. Mm-hmm. Would be further I, I think, a little yeah. further down. But great, it's a good. It's a really good story. The actual character of the master is good i just don't think he did a good job with it i wanted more yeah, and he did and he he pretty much said it in interviews he, he did not much he while well, he had fun in the role he didn't really care for it that much he's you not a tell. doctor who fan clearly you can tell he doesn't doesn't really know anything at all about the master so mm-hmm. he just i mean he basically did it for a paycheck yeah he was very dry one note, very monotonish, and yeah, you know, you just want you just want more. You just want more. Yeah, I mean, I will say he's got a really good voice for the master. Just he didn't acted with the voice that he had that okay. much. So, do we put him at the bottom tier or at the? I would. 
No, no, I wouldn't put him at the bottom tier. Because, uh, again, the character's good. If we're going for the character, like of the master, he's good. I'd put him above eyes. It's just above that. Above eyes? Yeah. Above Margatus? Mm, no. no. Okay, cool. Because I think Gatus brings something to the role. This guy really didn't. But I think the role was great. He just didn't bring anything to it, which is disappointing. It's disappointing. So it, it's was, a disappointing yeah, it was written great, wasn't yeah. acted great. Is yep, what you're saying. that's it. It was like, yeah, it would have been. It would. It could have been fantastic with someone else. True. Fantastic. Hey, may, maybe Margaret would have done a better job. Yep, maybe. But uh, now we kind of have another. Price would have done a better job. Yeah, maybe. But now we kind of have another one though that I'm kind of the only one who knows anything about her. Probably. It's the Lumiettes. She does show up for a hot okay. minute in yep. Masterful, but basically mm -hmm. it's the Master's Valiar, like the good version of the Master. Basically, mm -hmm. at one point in a splintered timeline, Missy just did something or rather that sucked all the badness out of her and, and re forced regenerated her into a good incarnation of herself, mm -hmm. where she basically became a fangirl of the Doctor, and she kept trying to find the doctor, the Jodie Whittaker version that is, she kept trying to find the doctor to impress her, and eventually she found Missy, and Missy was so dis so disgusted by how good she became, she just killed her, and regenerated her into another master we will be talking about, but meanwhile, Missy from the main timeline died after the Saxon master blasted her with his laser screwdriver, but somehow, this, this version of the master, the Lumiette, survived and that's how the master is still around in the Jodie Whittaker era. But as for the performance, I mean, she pretty much plays it as a straight up fangirl. Like she really, she geeks out over the doctor whenever she hears anyone mm -hmm. talk about her. And she, she just really wants to impress. <laughs> and you know what? She did not impress me all that much. But I'm going to, I'm going to refer back to what Joe Grant said. And you got to trust Joe Grant. And she didn't Always. think much of her. She didn't think much of the Lumia at all. She liked Missy. So yeah, so Lumia can go whatever. Joe Grant says no. Yeah, I'm fine with wherever. I mean, I'd only know her from a brief little appearance that she even paid in mass. She made it masterful. So, I mean, if we got more material mm -hmm. out of her, I, I think she might have been placed higher. But I did not really enjoy her in uh, the Missy series. I'm sorry. Okay. There, there, there could have been something there, but I don't know. I think she should, she should at the very least be at the top of the bone that's stupid. Fine. Like I said, and, Joe yeah. Grant is as good a, as good at uh, figuring out people as anyone, so she didn't like her. And speaking of bone dead stupid, oh boy, what about the child master from Masterful? Again, don't really know much about him outside of Masterful. So. That's the only thing he did. That's the only thing he's in, right? So then I would put him probably Bone Dead Stupid as well because he's not memorable. I mean, the whole crisis with the ship, he's kind of the main reason why they're off course for 65 years. Yeah. And as soon as the Reborn Master takes over, everything gets better. Sure, he uses people as batteries and he uses them as yeah. fuel and food. Delicious, delicious but, food. But at least he's actually getting the people to where they needed to go. Mm -hmm. This man dude, does nothing. Yeah. And really, the only the one only cracker. That's it for sixty-five years. Yeah, I was gonna say the only memorable thing that this master does is you tried to kill me with biscuits. Mm -hmm. That's the only good thing. That's the only memorable. Yeah. That's the only thing he does in that whole story is trying to kill the reborn master with crackers. Yeah, that's true. So should we? Put him at the bottom of the bottom or at the middle of the bottom? I'd put him at the middle of the bottom, I guess. So between these two weird old Yeah, men. that's fine. Yeah. That's a good spot for him. Okay. I'm actually a little curious to see where the spy master is going to rank amongst you guys. The right. such technically the most recent version of the master we got. I mean it, Sasha Dewan, very similar to John Sim did a lot with limited screen. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was, he's incredible. Easily the most deranged and most psychopathic uh, version of the master that we've ever gotten today. Well, like I texted you while watching Power of the Doctor, this guy's like the freaking Joker. 
Yeah, and what he does to the Doctor in some of those episodes, I mean, it's not quite on the same level as what this Master does, mm-hmm. but it's pretty up there. I mean, mm-hmm. He even becomes the Doctor at one point. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, no one... That's something that man, many Masters have tried to do, and none of them succeeded. The raspy teen thing was awesome oh, as well. That song oh. re-entered the charts like a gang fire when, uh, that, after that episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, hi on him. I just like, and just watching Spyfall again. Uh, a terrific first episode. Like you, you can say a lot about uh, uh, the guys playing the masters from how they debut, and all always kind of similar. <laughs> Everyone has like no real idea at first, and then the big reveal come near the end of the episode. It's 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 the formula. So. Um, I think he does a great job or whatever. Uh, I love that first episode of Spyfall and then the plane blowing up and stuff like that at, at the spoilers, spoilers, as the, with the plane blowing up and stuff like that and him revealing that uh, spy master thing. And then that fi- that power of the doctor. What a fucking performance in that one too. So I, I, I would go high. I, I'm, do, I wouldn't, I don't, I wouldn't put him as high as the Saxon Master. I just love those episodes so much with the with the uh, little human kind of almost Daleks the, in the faces and stuff like that. But uh, I, I would put him pretty... high. I would put him behind the Saxon Master, and I think that's a and that's a pretty honorable spot. I think. Yeah, I was actually thinking the same thing above Crispy Number One. Yeah. You mean you mean Crispy Number Two? Yes, Number sorry. Two. A new body. Who does number two work for? Sorry. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, wrong franchise. Yeah, wrong franchise. Sorry. I meant to say you bought me at last. My favorite. And speaking of new bodies, we talked about the child master. We mm-hmm. talked about the war master. Sure. How about the war child master? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so apparently in the comics. <laughs> At some point, at some point between this master and this master, when the time war was happening, the master just became an Asian child. I have fought alongside the war doctor in the in, in the time war. Okay. It's pretty ambiguous as to when exactly in the time war this is taking place. Mm. But you know what, Doctor Who continuity. Is n- never a straight line. It's a zigzag nope. spiral. Yeah, so, pretty much. I mean, he is technically the first Asian master, so that's he's got that going for him. Yeah, but I have not read the Titan comics yet, so all I know about him is he's considered the most ruthless version of the master, and he's a child fighting a war for the sake of time, and he's actually a friend of the war ma- war doctor at this point in time. So, sounds interesting, but I don't. I have, yeah, I yeah, might I want to read the comics, but until today, and oddly enough, that picture reminds me of Troughton. Just the same kind of hair. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm on a different strand. Do you know what that in picture reminds me of? Nope. Have any have either of you seen the Star Trek animated series, yes. the old one from the seventies, the, film, the oh, filmation one? It looks like a filmation cartoon. It does. He, he really reminds me of the young Spock from that one episode where they time travel oh, back. Okay, I can see that. I, I mean, I, I hate the child performance in that episode, but he really <laughs> does remind me of that. I hmm. uh, so, did stupid. I mean, we don't really know much about him. I mean, the fact we don't know much about him doesn't really exclude him. I mean, we know enough about the, the child master from Masterful and the Lumiat, and we still put them down there. I, I think would the say that... He's a, he yeah, sounds I think... interesting. I would say this one sounds interesting, and that I would actually like uh, to find out a little bit more of it, which means something. And yeah, as I mean, one of these guys I mean, in here is just a pair of eyes that I think is cool. I would, I, mean, I would I mean, say for sure he sounds... could be higher than that. I mean, the fact that he sounds interesting enough to make yeah. you want to check him out mm-hmm. should should put him a little bit higher than most than than the boat that's stupid tier, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I, you, he's will you obey me? Uh, level, I would think. Uh, do I put him above the f- the first master? I don't think so. I put him above eyes, though. I think okay, that's a good cool. spot for him. 
That's that's a good spot for any master to be in. Yeah. Sure. Okay, now now we kind of reach the point of the miscellaneous ambiguous masters. Mm -hmm. Now I initially I did not want to do this because I do not believe in this, but we have the war chief. Now he's from the episode The War Game, which yeah, takes like place, it. yeah, which is Patrick Talton's final episode as the oh, doctor, okay. right before the John Pertwee era. So even before the master was even introduced, but in min several of the novelizations that that happened after these episodes aired, the the writers, uh, um, Terrence Dix and uh, Robert Holmes, I believe. They pretty much said that th this is an earlier incarnation of the master before he started calling himself the master, and a lot of people ran with it. To me, he's not the master. I don't like the idea of just these random characters. The doctor Are they saying Rennie that people. anyone that has a something that looks close to a goatee could be the master. Mm -hmm. That was he going on here. The, I mean, he has the master look, but other than yeah, that, he's not very. Ma I mean, again, let, let me finish because when I did the research for this. There are several characters that the Doctor has met that people may have made claims that they are actually the Master oh. at an earlier incarnation. One of which also includes the meddling monk. Right. I'm firmly against because I don't think any character that the Doctor meets has to be the Master. Yeah. But I'm willing to make an exception for this guy because there's more evidence for him being the Master than some of these other characters that I've Found on my research, circumstantial mm -hmm. evidence. Yes, yeah, circumstantial, yeah. exactly. But that being said, have have you seen the war game snark? Uh, well, I've seen the last episode where he's on what the, the oh the, yeah with the guy that looks like uh, Noel Gallagher. Yeah, hmm. but he doesn't. But he doesn't show up in that episode, does he? No, I don't believe so. Now he he ran away before that, yeah. but I mean. He's kind of the guy that introduces the us to the concept of the Time Lords. And okay. I mean he, he does do some really bombastic, almost mastery things in that episode, but if he had silver main... streaks in his hair, then for sure you'd say, Oh, this guy could be a master for sure. But he just has a go. Yeah, he could be the master, but is but again, circumstantial evidence. I don't think he is the master. I don't think he should be considered the master, but I I you know, I conceded the point and decided to put him on this list. So, top of bone dead, stupid. Because he could, he might not even be the master. No, okay, fine. So, at least the other guys we know are the master. This yeah. guy's who knows. So, do we put, put him, him above top? or below the Lumiat? Put him sure. above. Put him above the Lumiat. Okay, cool. Now, speaking of potential masters. No we have the entropy wave from the end of Masterful. Now, oh, that's, this the, image, that's the master. This, yeah, this this image right here is actually taken from Logopolis because there oh. is no image of the entropy wave from Masterful, <laughs> but we're kind of using that as a reference. So sure. just imagine that this is the entropy wave yeah. from Masterful. I thought it was awesome. There you go. It was fun. Yeah, entropy wave was cool. The fact that they figured out, oh, that's just that. That's us coming to get us. So yeah. Yeah. Great. Loved it. And it, and it kind Hi. of undoes the whole story. Yeah. yeah. But high. How high? I mean, I again, it's it's not a physical being. It's not a physical form of the master. One it's of the, the most master. important things that the master does is talk, and this thing doesn't. So no, this thing just wrecks shit. Yeah, it just kills people. Out. Yeah. Great. He's like uh he's like um Eliath from the Loki series. Mm. That's how I took it in the in, in Masterful. So where do we put this? I really like the fact that well they say it is the master, so it is the master. They said that's us coming to get us. So now, so I think it has to go. Well, well it's definitely not bone dead stupid because I like it. No, I, I would go you will obey me. I, I would go above uh, Mark Gatiss. I, was, I don't think that he was should be. Actually, where I was going to put him, I was going to put him dead center in the middle. Yeah. 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 You can't put him. You can't put him over Tremis Master. But yeah, that's a good spot. Now this is the most recent version of the Master, uh -oh. but there's a caveat to that. It's from the Unbound series, the new Unbound series they did, 
with Colin Baker as the Doctor of War. Ooh. Basically, it's an alternate timeline where the Doctor did kill the Daleks in Genesis of the Daleks and just became a ruthless warrior. Oh, this interesting. Was for fun. Now, I have, not, I have not listened to that one just yet because it's so recent, but it has Jeffrey Beavers as the master, ah. but Ooh. it's Jeffrey Beavers as a proper human and not like this. Okay. Look at you, Crispy. Look all I cleaned it. up. All I dig cleaned it. up. So this is basically what Jeremy would have looked like in that story. Mm. And this, yeah. is, this, this is Jeremy. This is the master without a new body. <laughs> so instead, he's just come along, boy. Hand me your vestments. Mm -hmm. uh, again, listen to it. I don't know what the master does. I don't even. Know. Well, she doesn't even look that that evil. So I don't even know if he's if the doctor's a bad guy in that universe. You should Maybe he's a good guy. Yeah. He doesn't have a goatee, and that's what's troubling you, isn't it? Isn't it? It's troubling me. It's, it's part of it. I mean, this guy doesn't have a goatee either. He's but... just a kid. He's just a kid. He's too young to have a goatee. Yeah, come on, what do you want from, you want from the guy? 11 well, well, I mean, does Missy I think have he a look... goatee? Yeah. In her heart. Missy is perfect as she has a goatee did. around her heart, which is where it counts. Okay, cool. Cool. I, I'll, I'll concede. <laughs> but this guy, though. You will obey I mean, me. It's you. Yeah, we we can on um, automatically say it's going to be you will obey me because, uh, uh, of course, one of the greatest things that Doctor Who ever did is uh, he's responsible for saying. So he automatically gets his place. But where to place? You, I, you on mean? That, on, you're, I, are you referring to this? Come along, boy. Hand me your vestments. I was not. I was not <laughs> referring to that at all. Uh, oh, so you, oh, so you mean new body. Yeah, and not a new body. A last. new body mm -hmm. at last. Mm -hmm. Well, since uh, we know he's, you know, he's above Bone Dead Stupid, and after listening to that story, he could go much higher. But I think you have to put him. Uh, I think you can still put him above Eyes Boy. You can still put him above King Diamond. Okay, so above King Diamond, above the Asian child. I was gonna I make know. that gift, but I, I forgot. So here. Yeah, yeah, if you have zero to base this on, we have one little picture of him. Yeah, it sounds like his his story is yet to be told per se. Yeah. Well, it's, or well, he is. He has. It, it, it has been told. It's, I just have to to it. Yeah, it's been. You have to be listened to. But I'm saying like, there's also more to expect. I'm assuming probably more to expect from him. Oh, maybe you might be right. I think that's it. And that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. These are all the masters I could find and all the masters I could pros pro probably put. Shit. Oh, all boy. the masters I could properly put into a list. I I'm noticing there are several ma other masters on this list that did not make the cut, but you know what? It is my list, and that is how I roll. So that's how these are all the masters I decided to put on. The, the one worth rem remembering. Yeah, and I'm just suddenly noticing that uh, even though they, they, they took the James Dreyfus master off the artwork for Big Finish, they also ne neglected to include him in this artwork as well. So, yeah, it must have been pretty bad. So, hmm. yeah, I mean, the, these are all the masters and some, some of the other masters that we don't know much about. We apologize, but your stories are a story for another time. So, uh, go ahead and end it. No, I think we, I think, uh, I think we could, I th and sure. I think we should. So, uh, the, so the master of your own domain, shall we start with you for the plugs? Sure. Uh, right here on the Northern Entertainment Group, every Tuesday, we're doing, uh, have you seen this? We're going to talk television with me and a couple other Canadian jerks. Uh, not even that one. A couple of other Canadians. There's so many Canadians. Yeah. Uh, you can catch me over on LGRN talking the playoff beers. It's our hockey show, the starting 11. That's our English Premier League show. If you're a part of the Patreon, you get to see LGRN after start. And so there's been a guest on that as well. And it's just where we talk about serious subjects all the time. And not mm -hmm. be getting hammered and just talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah. And the Master Soda. Where can people find you? 
You can find me all over the interwebs at soda underscore the underscore saxman. You can find me here in the Northern Entertainment Group doing shows with 50 and other people. You can find me over, yeah, just over doing uh, stuff, like I said, all over the internet. So just keep an eye out to my uh, my Twitter page there. Yeah, and you can find me every Monday on this show to talking about the greatest show in the galaxy every Thursday with the other master here talking about uh, our individual countries on Fun with Flags. And you can also find me on my own YouTube channel, 50 Years of Geek, where I do weekly reviews of every single Doctor Who episode from 1963 all the way up to 2022. And I'm also... And uh, aside from us, you can also check out our good friend, uh, late great, great Ben Raider, his channel, The Multiverse of Geekdom, a lot of good friends, uh, keeping the flame alive over there. And our good friend... Taco ha- is uh, making the rounds on his final few weeks on his channel, Something to Taco About. And I think that's about it. So, in the words of the master himself, You tried to kill me with biscuits. Not that one. A new body at last. Not that one either. Come what? on, get it. Come on, get it right. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.